On February 15, 2001, Fox aired a television program about the Apollo moon hoax. Exactly one week later, Tony Phillips wrote this article for Science at NASA. The Great Moon Hoax. Moon rocks and common sense prove Apollo astronauts really did go to the moon. The moon rocks are absolutely unique, says Dr. David McKay, chief scientist for planetary science and exploration at NASA's Johnson Space Center. There are isotopes in the moon rocks, isotopes we don't normally find on Earth, that were created by nuclear reactions with the highest energy cosmic rays, says McKay. So why were we told by geologists the exact opposite about the moon rocks in 1999? Back then, we were told the isotopes were the same as the Earth's. In 2001, we are told they are different. Bottom line, we know that these rocks are identical to Earth in many ways. The only materials that are uncommon to Earth are also commonplace with meteorites. No. Bottom line, in 1999, Dr. William Hartman said that Earth rocks and Moon rocks have the same oxygen isotope ratios. In 2001, Dr. David McKay said Moon rocks have unspecified isotopes created by high-energy cosmic rays that we normally don't see on Earth. Dr. McKay's cosmic ray-induced isotopes have nothing to do with Dr. Hartman's oxygen isotope ratios, especially when referring to Earth rocks that are protected from cosmic rays by the Earth's atmosphere. Regardless of how Jared tries to twist their statements into a straw man argument between opposing factions of lying or ignorant scientists, these two particular scientists are clearly talking about two different things. This is again more cherry picking and selective editing by Phil Webb. Even though the BBC did a whole documentary on the fact that moon rocks had, among other things, identical oxygen isotopes, when they ran their story on Smart One's controlled impact into the moon, they changed their story. ESA did the same. This was discussed in Exhibit D. Although in 1999, the BBC told us that the analysis of the Apollo samples led scientists to believe that the Earth and Moon were of the same origin, in 2006, when the BBC reported Smart One's controlled impact, they completely changed their story. Applause marked the end of Europe's first mission to the Moon. The European Space Agency sent its Smart One spacecraft to carry out one final experiment. It involved colliding into the lunar surface at four and a half thousand miles an hour. The plumes of moon dust sent out into space could be seen by astronomers on Earth. It's again a big success for, the, for ESA and I think we have uh, had a spacecraft that provided a lot of new information, a lot of, uh, so to say, training for us and it was really a great mission. The Smart One spacecraft has spent the past three years building up the most detailed picture yet of the moon's surface. Scientists hope that this will help them discover whether the Moon really was once part of the Earth. One theory is that 4.6 billion years ago, an object the size of Mars collided with the Earth. Somehow the Earth survived and the pieces knocked off it were sent into orbit. Eventually that debris clumped together to form our Moon. But doubt was cast on that theory when Apollo astronauts analysed Moon rock. They found that it may not once have come from Earth. But earlier, we were told that the analysis of those rocks led scientists to propose that very theory. Why rewrite history? They even used the same CGI animation that they used when initially propping up the giant impact theory. It was sent into orbit. Eventually that debris clumped together to form our moon. But doubt was cast on that theory when Apollo astronauts analysed moon rock. They found that it may not once have come from Earth. The more people considered it, the more Hartman's theory seemed to fit all the known facts about the Moon. If it was born from the Earth, its rock would be the same. The heat of the collision explained why the Moon was once entirely molten, and any water in its rocks had vaporized. Astonishingly, ESA did nothing to correct the BBC's contradiction. Instead, they echoed and amplified it. 
On their website, we find... Ever since American astronauts brought back samples of moon rock during the Apollo moon landings of the late 60s and early 1970s, planetary scientists have been struck by the broad similarity of the moon rocks and the rocks found deep in the Earth, in a region known as the mantle. This boosted the theory that the moon formed from debris left over after the Earth was struck a glacing blow by a Mars-sized planet. However, the more scientists looked at the details of the moon rock, the more discrepancies they found between them and the Earth rocks. Most importantly, the isotopes found in the moon rocks did not agree with those found on Earth. When we got the rocks back from the moon, we saw that the um, isotopes of oxygen in the lunar rocks were exactly the same as on the Earth. Now the reason this is important is that we have meteorites from other parts of the solar system and each other part of the solar system has a different composition of these oxygen isotopes, ratio of one type of isotope to the other. The moon has exactly the same as the Earth. So that seemed to rule out the idea that the moon had formed far away and it made it much more plausible that the moon was something made out of the same material that the Earth was made out of. Evidently, when pressed with incriminating evidence, NASA must rewrite their scientific data and historical record, and thus, everyone must shed themselves of the old data. Here is another example of NASA rewriting the history of lunar geology. On February 15, 2001, Fox aired a television program about the Apollo moon hoax. And you know the rest. This whole section regarding the Science at NASA article was simply additional material to the earlier section, which shows clear as day ESA turning around and suddenly claiming that the moon rocks were particularly different in isotope and thus may not have come from the Earth, and the BBC falling in line and peddling that claim despite previously reporting the exact opposite. Of course, you'd only know what I was talking about if you watched the part of my documentary that Webb intentionally left out of his video. He had to have seen it. You can tell by the annotations that Webb used the Hartman interview clip that immediately followed the isotope contradiction by ESA. Being fair, some who commented on my video have claimed that the unspecified isotopes mentioned by ESA and McKay are probably not oxygen isotopes. Even if true, neither of them mentioned the fact that the oxygen isotopes, in addition to many other things, are identical to those of Earth and ultimately led scientists to believe that the Earth and Moon shared the same origin. Funny they didn't mention that, don't you think? Even if we ignore what McKay said about isotopes, the Science at NASA article is still contradictory. Remember, this is the same bloke who in 1994 stated that lunar soil has its mineralogy and chemistry within the same ranges as the JSC-1 lunar regolith simulants, which are nothing but crushed terrestrial basalts. A new lunar soil simulant, JSC-1, has been developed and characterized under the auspices of the NASA Johnson Space Center. This simulant was produced in large quantities to satisfy the requirements of a variety of scientific and engineering investigations. JSC-1 is derived from volcanic ash of basaltic composition, which has been ground, sized, and placed into storage. The simulant's chemical composition, mineralogy, particle size distribution, specific gravity, angle of internal friction, and cohesion have all been characterized and fall within the ranges of lunar mare soil samples. And yet here, McKay says, Moon rocks are absolutely unique. They differ from Earth rocks in many respects. How? If Webb wants to go after bare assertion fallacies, this is a good place to start. The alleged differences in question are the usual garbage. The supposed absence of water-induced minerals, the rocks and glasses being supposedly older than anything available on Earth, and the zap pits allegedly created by micrometeorite impacts. Go go gadget rehash! As for moon rocks having materials uncommon with earth rocks, yet commonplace with meteorites, where did that come from? Up to this point, all Jera says is that moon rocks are identical to meteorites because they contain radiation. 
So what materials do they have in common? Is Jera saying that radiation is a material now? This is a bare assertion fallacy that is clearly unrelated to any previous statements made by Jera. No, it's quite relevant to the previous statement I made. Do I need to play the Paul Rene interview clip that I referenced right at the beginning of my radiation rabbit hole, as you put it? The uh, lunar materials that we've analyzed and, and that others have analyzed show evidence of having been bombarded by cosmic radiation, uh, which we don't see on Earth because we have an atmosphere that really shields them uh, very effectively. Would it surprise anyone who actually listened to what I say that the materials I was referring to were the ones that show signs of space radiation, which are also common in meteorites? My position becomes even clearer if you just watch the continuation of the clip that Webb shows. Bottom line, we know that these rocks are identical to Earth in many ways. The only materials that are uncommon to Earth are also commonplace with meteorites. It seems that Red has taken that into account. So how do we know they didn't just fall as asteroids? NASA certainly has examples of these that have been collected from... By taking that into account, Red Zero has clearly listed several characteristics of Apollo samples that are also characteristics of meteorites. One of those said characteristics is radiation. Red tries to cover for this by propping up the tired old absent oxidation claim which we demonstrated previously was false. Webb knew very well what I was talking about, as did everyone else who watched my video. Obviously, the major difference I was referring to was radiation. I guess I could have worded it better, but obviously I didn't, and as such, Webb tries to twist it for defamatory purposes. As pointed out already, the chemistry and mineralogy of the Apollo samples are virtually the same as Earthrocks. If Earthrocks were used, that would explain the similar characteristics. The only thing you can find in Apollo samples that you can't find in terrestrial rocks is evidence of having been exposed to cosmic radiation. But this evidence also exists in meteorites found on Earth. This brought me to the conclusion that Apollo samples are a combination of terrestrial rocks and meteorites. In response, Webb proceeds to ramble on and on about how common meteorites have their own chemistry and mineralogy different to those of moon rocks, and thus would have been a dead giveaway if they were used. It sounds good enough to the casual listener, but there are several major problems with this statement. Problems that I find quite interesting and fear warrants a response.